Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about one of the more important formulas in my opinion in Excel and that is the PMT formula used for calculating a payment. I would say a monthly payment which is probably the most common but the period is actually a pretty important part of the process. So here's a scenario I'm looking at. So I'm saying uh, here I'm looking at borrowing a quarter million dollars, paying it back over 30 years and the interest rate is four and a half percent. All right, it's 2015, that's a relatively reasonable scenario where I live. So it's actually mathematically kind of a difficult process to figure out what my monthly payment would be. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Excel. So I'm gonna click in cell B4, head over to formulas, I'm gonna to go to financial, I'm gonna head down to PMT, it's down near the very bottom. All right, so we're looking at a dialog box here. So the first thing is rate, and so that's pretty self-explanatory. There's a nice little hint down here. So for this, I'm going to reference cell B3, not because it's B3, but because that is where the rate is. And notice it's a percent, that's important. So this keyword right here, monthly, means there's 12 payments in a year, which means that I need to divide this number by 12. So this isn't just a dialog box and reading labels. There's a little more to it than that. N per, this is the number of pyramid, uh, periods or payments for the loan. So here I'm going to point at years, and I'm going to multiply that by 12. And you'll see this number here, 360. That means over the life of the loan, I'm going to be making 360 payments. Now, many sources out there, a lot of textbooks and scenarios will have you enter 360 right in here because it is the same thing. I'm telling you, whenever you can avoid that, you should because it will affect some of the more advanced applications of this function down the road. So divide the first one, multiply the second one by whatever the amount of periods in a year is. PV is relatively straightforward. That is the value of the loan. And notice how these are bold. That means those are mandatory. These are optional. If I click on them, we can see a little bit about what they are. So we typically do not use those. I'll come back to them in a minute. If I click OK at this point, I get something like that and that looks like a reasonable number now notice that it's red and it's got parentheses well that's because i put the currency format on it and just kind of wanted to highlight that so notice that by default pmt does return a negative number no need to discuss that uh, you can interpret it as you will so if for some reason that's not what you wanted to see you can switch that by negating the last parameter in that function. So like I could either do it manually or I can put a negative right there. Now it's positive. Whatever floats your boat, I don't think either one of them is correct or incorrect. It depends on your application. I'm going to undo that. How I typically neg negate things is I put a negative sign before the function itself and so I get the same product. Now me personally, I leave it negative because that's what Excel returns and if Excel wants to return a negative number, that's fine with me. Let's look at one more example and we'll look at those last two pieces of the dialog box. So notice this sheet was called monthly. Let's head on over to quarterly. Very similar situation. The only difference is that word right there. Let's see how it affects our results. So I head to formulas, financial, PMT. So here's my rate. Divide it by the number of payments in a year. So if I'm making quarterly payments, that means I'm gonna be making four payments a year head on over to years, multiply that by that number again, right? So four payments in a year. This piece right here is going to be the same. It's never gonna be like 12 in one place and three in another. Head on down, this is the easy part, that's the amount. And at this point I'm done, I really am. But let's talk about these briefly. Um, not real common to use these. So this is the idea that right, a future cash balance you would want to attain after the last payment is made. So. Right, that's very specific to a certain situation and that's not most situations. This right here is Boolean, so it's a zero or a one. Uh, a one means that you are making a payment at the beginning of the period, a zero at the end of the period. And so hopefully you can see how those are not applicable to this situation at all. More often than not, you're just trying to figure out what you can afford to borrow and how it's going to impact your situation, in which case these are the three variables that you will need. I click OK and I get something like that. Now notice I had the same numbers, that's a lot bigger, right? Comparing those numbers. The difference is I'm only I'm paying this back over the same amount of time. I'm only making four payments per year, so it's certainly going to be larger. So that, that looks like an, uh, an agreeable answer to me. 
So that's the PMT function. Uh, it manifests itself in a lot of goal seek situations, and it's one of those functions that I do use on a pretty regular basis, and I think it's one that you should know how to use as well. Important in managing finances. So now you know how to use the PMT function. Thanks for watching.